new details on text messages between the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows reveal their push to overturn the 2020 election. Robert Costa is in Washington with an exclusive investigation, and he's joining us now. So, Robert, um, Vlad and I have been talking about this through the break, and we, we still can't believe how this story is unfolding. Um, so uh, let's talk to you about just the types of text messages we're talking about and then just how damaging this is. Well, in terms of the damage, this is a story that is still unfolding. Uh, Bob Woodward and I have unveiled these 29 text messages, 21 from Ginny Thomas to Mark Meadows, 8 from Mark Meadows to Ginny Thomas, that have been obtained by the House Select Committee investing the January 6th attack. Where this all goes, though, and what the damage could be is still very much an unanswered question, because the the committee still has to make a decision. Will it subpoena Ginny Thomas to come talk to the committee about her relationship memorialized in these text messages with the Trump White House? Yeah, and that's important, Bob, that distinction, because, correct me if I'm wrong, these text messages uh, that you and Bob Woodward have uh, been reporting on are Mark Meadows' text messages. They are not Ginny Thomas's uh, text messages. Um, so, uh, how, first of all, do we expect that the January 6th committee will want to see uh, the whatever is on Ginny Thomas's phones? Could Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas uh, be subpoenaed for his phone records? Um, and ultimately, as we've been pointing out, she has a First Amendment right to say whatever she wants to say and support whatever cause she wants to support. But how unprecedented is this? It's a tricky constitutional, legal, and political issue, highly charged in many ways. Does Congress have oversight over Supreme Court justice? In some ways, it does. Congress can impeach a Supreme Court justice, should they choose to do so. But at the same time, it's an independent branch of government, the third branch of government, the judiciary, that's not, that does not, does not answer to Congress in any way. And so, can Congress ask for records that may be records of a Supreme Court justice who's a sitting member of another branch of government. Again, these are issues that might have to be solved in court. I know they're being discussed behind the scenes right now among my sources close to the January 6th committee. But how exactly do you move forward here? Do you ask for Ginny Thomas to come? Do you ask for Clarence Thomas to come? Is a subpoena issued? Is it voluntary conversations? Can you get the phone records of a spouse but not of the justice? Can you get the phone records of a justice of, of a Supreme Court, uh, of the Supreme Court, if you believe they might have some kind of a knowledge of what the committee is charging in a court filing as a criminal conspiracy? So a lot of issues circulating here that have remained unsolved. What's important to understand is that Mark Meadows did provide 2,320 text messages to the committee. His messages are part of those uh, that stash of text messages, that trove. So are Ginny Thomas's text messages, and they've been verified by the committee internally and by people who are familiar with the committee. Uh, but we don't know if these are the only text messages. Uh, Bob Woodward and I, uh, working on a joint project, CBS News and The Washington Post, found these 29 messages, but there are gaps in the correspondence, and Meadows has clearly, it seems, not provided all of his text messages to the committee because he believes some of them are privileged under the executive privilege uh, provision. So, of what you've seen so far, then, what do these text messages reveal about the nature of the relationship between Jenny Thomas and Mark Meadows? Well, where to begin? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a relationship that's stunning in its back-channel nature, in the topics that are being discussed, conspiracy theories. For example, Jenny Thomas says, I hope this is true at one point, days after the election, referencing a conspiracy theory that has some roots in the QAnon conspiracy theory movement, which is that, long story short, then-President Trump watermarked ballots mm -hmm. in order to try to track fraud in some way that might be happening in the 2020 election. We don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but it is important to note there is no evidence, nothing has been found to support this theory, to say the least, but that was being circulated to the White House chief of staff. Also, notably, she was pushing Sidney Powell, a conservative lawyer with very controversial views, to be the, quote, lead and the face of Trump's legal strategy. So you have a spouse of a Supreme Court justice advocating a legal strategy to the chief of staff at the White House. And at one point, she says to Mark Meadows in a text message, you got to really get your white West Wing staff, all those White House staffers, get them more plugged in, get behind President Trump. Essentially, if you read the text message, it seems to be 
offering some kind of management advice to the White House and, and to Mark Meadows, who's running the West Wing? Uh, Robert, Bob Woodward has said in an interview that he had never seen anything like this before. Let me play some of that. I've never seen anything like this. I've done reporting about the Supreme Court, the Congress, and the White House for 50 years. This is uh, an entanglement where you find, uh, I, like you, was really surprised, even shocked, to see the depth of emotion, the depth of conviction that we somehow have to turn over the election. This is Ginny Thomas and uh, Mark Meadows talking in private text messages, which we have. So Bob Woodward uh, calls it unprecedented, uh, Robert. I mean, um, it, it does seem as if it's unprecedented. Anne Marie and I were just talking that, you know, we, I, I think the American people may not even know the names of the spouses of Supreme Court justices or even United States senators or mm -hmm. congressmen. Essentially, we know the first lady um, and the second gentleman, and that's it, because generally uh, folks like that tend to keep a low profile. Um, so, do you agree with, with Bob Woodward that this is unprecedented and that there is more to come, more importantly? It's certainly unprecedented. Uh, Woodward and I have discussed we haven't seen any kind of precedent that shows a spouse of a Supreme Court justice coordinating strategy and guidance with a, a top member of the White House while the White House is pursuing a possible case before the Supreme Court. The context here is so important. Remember, after the election, President Trump at the time goes before a lectern in a crowd and says, we're going to take this all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. So that was the intent he had. And while he had that intent publicly, his chief of staff was communicating privately with a member of that same court. What we're also seeing here is something uh, that really reveals how the Trump orbit worked in the days and weeks after the election as they pushed to overturn the election to stop the certification of Joe Biden, then president-elect on January 6, 2021. Bob Woodward and I spent nearly a year digging into this issue for our book, Peril, that came out in September of 2021. And in that book, we, we found some things that were really intriguing about how this all worked, like the John Eastman memo that what many people are calling a blueprint for a coup uh, was included in our book. And that showed how so many lawyers and people around Trump were pushing ideas on him, like go, trying to have alternate electors in states put Trump back in the White House. But even after publishing our book, it's evident that the story still needs to be told. There are more characters, more conversations, uh, more things that are happening behind the scenes, all with one central mission, as these text messages show, to keep Trump in the White House. Uh, as always, uh, Robert Costa, along with Bob Woodward, incredible reporting. Uh, Robert, thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.